a, a terrible disease in the name of diabetes. For uh, about six years, no, she had it in 1985 and died in 1989. The worst part of it is her last days before she died. She had diabetic wounds all over the body. Every skin on her body was just peeling off. So you, the only thing you could see was blood oozing and the red meat on her body. So if she put on any type of dress, it could stick on the wounds. And when it was removed, it would come out with the flesh. So she had nowhere to hide herself. She could not sleep. She could not sit down. Anywhere was just hell on earth. So at last, she, gave, she succumbed to the sickness. And she died. And then I came here at Southampton and did my BSc and a practical training in all aspects of a aircraft landing systems and the calibration of airport equipment all over the world. My job was uh, very special because uh, I could only report to the government of East Africa, of Kenya, Uganda, and Tanzania. That make you to have contact and talk together to head of states. Yes, any time I went there, they had to know that I was in the country and what type of the job I was sent to do. In the other hand, you were earning good money. You could, if money could help, you could use it to cure your mother. Yes, I started earning good money at a very early age. I had a, a lot of money at that time. And if it was money to cure your mother, you could do anything that your money and make your mom to be surviving. Yes, I could do anything to cure my mom because at that time there was only one doctor in the whole country who specialized in diabetes, Dr. Mungola. And when I took my mom to him, he said that diabetes is, uh, can only be controlled but cannot be cured. There was nothing she, he could do at the level of uh, where my mom had reached with her diabetes. So he just told me to, to wait for her death. And how could you feel when the maggot is in your mother's body and the mother, your mother's skin is peeling remaining meat? It was sad at Bishop. I remember one day I went home from Nairobi to see her and she told me that you are my son. There's nothing I'm hiding. She removed all her clothes to show me the wounds. And I could not bear it anymore. You couldn't? I couldn't. It's painful. Even if I was you, I will definitely be concerned. Even today, the doctors, Dr. Al, Dr. Aline and Hans, confirmed that 40 million people has died of diabetes. But there is no cure for it. They can only control it, but they don't have the answer to cure it. And how your mom died is also they describe it. That happened in that manner. Yes, as Bishop, I thank you for alerting everybody. Because I was reading in a newspaper last week. Kenya with a population of 30 million. 10 million are now affected by diabetes. Mm. So it is wiping out Kenyan population. Kenya has got 30 million people. 10 million people of Kenyans are suffering of diabetic. Yes. So your brother has type 1 diabetic. What about your mother? What type of your mother was? My mother also had a type 1 diabetes. So that is known as type 1 diabetes. Do you know type 2? Yes. Okay, we are not going to go on deep type 2, type 1. We let us go to type 1 diabetic, which made your brothers 
leg to be amputated. And what happened? Because it eat the marrows inside the bones. Yes, just started as ordinary sickness, but then it developed into complications. So he was being he was given insulin to be injecting himself once every day. Your brother. My is, brother. Is he the elder brother or younger? Elder brother. Thank you. But then uh, it reached a stage where medicine could not have control. So he started devel developing gangrene. So one leg started rotting. So when he was taken to the ward, they, just, they tried to heal the wounds, but it could not, they could not do anything. So one day when I went to see him, I just found uh, the whole, uh, the bed covered with maggots. Uh, your brother also had maggots like your mother. Yes. Can you listen to what uh, this learned gentleman who did his Cambridge in 1963 and had a high profile job and get his degree here in UK and went and worked. Can you hear what he's saying? His mother has had type 1 diabetic that her flesh peel off and her body remained flesh and she was alive. With maggot eating her in front of her children. And he, she, she was a mother of reputed passion like him. And you could imagine the maggot is eating your mother. The same maggot eat his elder brother when the doctor in the hospital is more, more emotional. So your brother had the same maggot you used to see on your mother because of diabetes. Yes, he had a, the right leg got rotten. Mm hmm Completely. Rotten completely. Completely. So when they amputated his leg, we could just see the the hollow tube. The marrow was eaten by a maggot. So it was just a hollow tube. Mr. Lango, can you just let me understand that uh, uh, the leg is a bone, isn't it? And in the bone, bone is like a pipe. Am I right? Yes. Inside the bones, there are what we call Maru. bone marrow. Mm. They are very sweet when you eat them from the chicken leg. <laughs> Even the cow one. I enjoy if you give me cow. What I like to get make sure I, I chew is the <laughs> marrow. Marrow is very sweet. So with your brother, the marrow was already eaten by my goat. Yes, but the, your brother was still alive watching you with eyes like this. Yes, he was watching us live. Painful. Painful. He had a lot, he felt a lot of pain, but uh, there was nothing we, the doctor could do. Nothing. Nothing the doctor could do. So when the, the highest authority in the hospital suggested that they should amputate the leg, he was very weak. So they amputated his leg when he was alive because they could not put him on anesthesia. He was too weak. So that pain killed him instantly. Hey, he cried. He cried very loudly asking them why they were killing him. And this is a diabetic a diabetic which also come on your other brother. Yes, before that it had killed my follower in 1982. Diabetic? Yes, he was the first one to die in the family. Of diabetic? Yes. So you lost your mother of diabetic, you lost your elder brother and your younger brother. Yes. And now it was on you. Yeah, so when it jumped on me, I knew this disease has no cure, and uh, I was just uh, waiting for my time to come. Because your mother has gone, your two brothers are gone, and now in, you also, 
the doctor confirmed to you you have the same thing. So you know that where your brothers has gone and your mother has gone, you are also your days were short. Yes. So when did you when, when did they diagnose you having diabetic? In fact, when, uh, when I found that uh, everybody was dying, I just went to hospital myself to have a, a, a checkup, normal checkup. And uh, that was, I can't remember the year because with the diabetes, you lose memory very fast. You do? Yes, I don't know whether it was 94 or whether it was uh, 2000. Mm. But it was a bit earlier. Then it disappeared, it deceived me, it disappeared completely. Mm. Then I started just eating normal food, doing other things. Mm. And then it came back again, that is 2002. 2002. That is when I came here to be healed in this church up to now. So, your mother, your, your brother, Margot, and others die early. Can you explain to the congregation the symptoms and the effect, the embarrassment that diabetes causes you concerning your urina urinating or your nails and your impotency, which is definitely was so much embarrassing? Actually, it is better for diabetes to catch up with you at old age when you have already had your children. That's Otherwise, good. it is a deceit which will make you important. Mm. Mm. So if it catches up with you at early age before you have children, you are finished. You can't have one. You may, because it depends on how active you will be, but you will not be as active as you should be when you don't have it. Mm. So when I had it, uh, side effects were so severe on me, I mm. felt like just staying in the house permanently because I could urinate every 30 minutes. Every 30 minutes. And any time urine comes, you have no control. It will just come out like a, a pipe which has burst. Mm. So it just flows out whether you like it or not. And uh, the moment it does that, it can also make your blood be like fermented alcohol. Mm. So your body just smells alcohol, and that one attracts bacteria. Mm. So when you cut your, any, any, any small cut on your skin will never, will never heal. Mm. It goes into a big wound, which may result into amputation. Mm. So those are, were my side effects, and uh, the importance was severe on me. And uh, I had a wife who is very kind and who gave me a lot of encouragement. Mm. And so we just had to live with it. Just a minute. Mommy, can you have that microphone from your husband? And tell people how painful to have a man whom you marry and now is important. Thank you, Archbishop. As all women know, you know, there's a source of marriage, and that source is sex. If it's not there, you feel like you are missing something very big. And as my husband says, it's unfortunate if it catches you at an early age. But if you are mature the way I was at the time my husband caught it, at least you can learn to live with it. So when he could not uh, perform, I was just, I can't say I was uh, devastated because I wasn't that young at that time. You so a mother. But, yeah, I'm, I was already a mother, but then I had to give him encouragement and support. But thank God, Archbishop, since you ministered for him, he's now okay. It's very much okay. It's now okay. Over five years now, it's now okay. Yes. Go, go back to Mr. Langham. 
Nails. Nails, your nails were gone. Nails. Yeah, they just started peeling off. It started with my foot nails. Mm. I lost most of my foot nails. Mm. So they, uh, they are just peeling off. Yeah, they turn. Uh, they they change the color. Mm. In fact, bacteria is very common with foot nails. Mm -hmm. So they change the color, and uh, I could see them just peeling off and falling off. Until after. Uh, my the healing mm. in the church they came back they came back to normal even the one in your, your hand your nail your, your fingers yes the ones on my hand were so bad because they they turned blackish they were very black mm. and i wouldn't like somebody to see my nails anytime i i was talking to people i used to put my hands or hide my hands but now you can see they are very very normal like anybody's nails Mr. Lango, the diabetic killed your mother, your two brothers, and you are also going. Can you let the congregation know how long have you been now here and how healthy you are? For it? Because people could think that you just maybe got healed two months ago or two years ago because there are people here who has, been, who has received their healing. We will encourage them. To know that what happened to them is not just temporary, it's a long life healing. What I can say, before that I did not know the main cause of the, our diabetes. Mm. So when I found that it, it was wiping our family, I came here for a deliverance. By that time you are still at a new cross. I could go there at 11 o'clock deliverance for, a, for many years. But my healing came on 11th December 2005. That is the time when Archbishop told me to bring all the medicine, the medications I had, and he administered to me. That time the pulpit was where the choir is. So he prayed for me, and I got healed. And I can remember I used to eat like a pig. Even when I came to church, I could not finish service without going out to eat something. But that day when I came to see Archbishop, I stayed for a whole day from morning up to evening without even taking water. So Archbishop called for tea without milk when I was with him at reception. And then that tea kept me going until I went home for my dinner. So from 2005, 11th December, I'm now a normal person. Which is now five good years. Yes. Five good years, the man who lost his family because of diabetes is perfect. And according to the research, which we discover with the medical people, diabetic has got no cure. And this one, I want to let everyone to understand that our being here is don't just think we are coming here just to chase demons out and be here because the demons, whatever it is. There are more benefit of joining such kind of wagon. Olango has refused to divert his faith. I'm so devastated with the people who does not trust my God. And if you don't trust my God, I beg you, can you go to those gods? Because when I give me embarrassment, I would like people like Olango who has confidence with God I serve. If I were you, I'd be careful now diverting faith. And I want to tell the church, I have searched in the whole entire United Kingdom. I never found somebody has a ministry which is sound-minded following the Bible like this one. Not because of me, God has given evidence that we can prove that. Surely there's life changing here. 